Okay, uh, so my name is Shelza Vashish. I am the research scholar in uh, LPU India. And my study relates to risk profiling of Indian public sector banks. Uh, so basically what we have done in this uh, research is that uh, we have specifically selected the largest public sector banks of India because they are already in the consolidation phase and government is uh, in the process of merging them uh, after almost a couple of decades. So in order to understand whether these mergers will be helpful or not, and what kind of banks should be merged into each other, we have done a collaborative study where we have considered these banks as one group. And in that one group, we have calculated the various subgroups on the basis of their risks. So we've taken uh, the financial variables from uh, the financial crisis of 2008-9 in order to see that whether uh, there has been any improvement or uh, since the financial crisis, because as we know that Indian banks performed uh, comparatively well as compared to the rest of the world uh, in terms of financial crisis. So, but we still suffered a lot of shock. Uh, so it is important to see that what is the progress we have made uh, since then. So basically uh, what the literature has suggested so far is that uh, ownership is very important uh, element in determining the risk profile of any banking firm, especially when it comes to public sector bank, because uh, we are we have seen that they are more interested in uh, propagating or pushing the government reforms and the populist measures sometimes, and their focus is not on profit, which is a good thing in a socialist environment, but at the same time it can be bad for the riskiness of the bank and for the investor's return as such. So in order to find out that, uh, and in India, public sector banks have always been criticized for being less profitable and more risky. So in order to understand that what actually is the risk profile and which of the banks are more riskier than the other, we have performed this study. Now the major contribution, what we have done is, we have uh, the existing studies have mainly focused on the mathematical models based on the financial ratios that is CAMELS or Z-score models that takes in the studies individual banks and uh, gives them a score or the rating. But nobody, uh, no mechanism as such has been followed, which is a comparative measure that they can compare one bank with all the other sectors, uh, all the other banks in the same ownership group and then compare on uh, comment on their risk, comparative risk profile. For that, we have used the clustering technique which is a very common uh, marketing and the uh, social behavioral sciences technique, but we have used it in the uh, financial data. So basically what we have done is 10 largest, sec largest public sector banks. Uh, we have taken on the basis of their asset size and we have taken the data for 12 years and performed this analysis on the basis of K-means clustering. Now K-means is a special clustering which already has a predefined number of clusters and lets us uh, divide the cases into those uh, variables. Now, why we have chosen K-means clustering? Because we already wanted to know that how many of them are high and low risk uh, banks. So we did not need to find out the number of clusters. We already had those classification uh, in mind. And that's why clustering, K-means clustering was used. And in order to find out uh, in those risk profile, what the differentiation, which variables are more significant than the others. We have used the um, one-way ANOVA uh, on the clusters itself, the results of the clusters to find out that which of these variables contribute to the forming of those clusters over the years. So these are the variables which we have used. Some of them are, uh, so we've taken all these variables to uh, broadly identify all the five major types of risk, which the Basel Committee uh, has defined. Basel Committee, as you know, that is the standard uh, regulatory or non-prescribing body with, for international standards. And they have classified the bank risk into five major kinds of risk. And we have taken these variables, which can broadly cover those five types. And these are the basic descriptions of basic abbreviations which we have used in the studies uh, so far. And these are the variables. Some of them are profitability indicators, 
and some of them are liquidity indicators for example cash um, uh, what is the cash and bank balance to the total asset and the most important ones specific to the industry are loans to deposit ratio and the npas which has again been the point of contention for the performance of indian banks because we have been witnessing a very high trend of non performing assets so once we have taken this variables we have uh, applied the cluster analysis on each of the, on these variables for all the banks every year to see the uh, performance trend over 12 years and see that whether those banks have uh, improved their performance or whether they have deteriorated or remained same so this basically uh, shows the risk profile that uh, the cluster the final end results of the cluster that which of these banks can be clustered into which uh, risk profile so these are the 10 banks as we see that the bigger banks like the sbi and the bank of baroda which have been the strongest and the largest banks and they have performed much better as compared to the smaller banks like uco banks and indian overseas bank and the central bank of india which have been consistently performing high risk so a further research can be conducted on the relationship between the size of the bank and the owner by taking the ownership as a moderating variable to find out that how these two are related to the risk profile of the bank but the preliminary results show that the bigger banks which have the higher asset base are performing better than the smaller banks in terms of the risk profile and as such we have seen that um, uh, these banks have improved in their performance over the years so which was expected out of them and uh, because rbi has uh, done a lot of taken a lot of steps in order to uh, keep the regulations in check and keep the scams in check uh, and despite the regulatory change in the mergers these banks have been performing well although the impact of covid can be studied that uh, what exactly how much big of a shock was this to the indian economy because a lot of uh, loan uh waivers were given by the government and lot of uh defaults happened in the year 2020 and 2021 so this will be another set of uh, small mini crisis for the bank and the impact can this study can be taken further to include that effect so uh, as i mentioned we used the uh, tab anova to actually find out that which of the variables are more significant for determining the risk profile as such of a bank so what we have observed is that uh, these are the p values of anova so what we have observed is that the profitability inde uh, indicators which are the return on assets and return on equity and the net profit they are the most significant factors throughout the period of study for all almost all 12 years they have been significantly important for the uh, clustering and they have caused the major difference uh, between the high and the low risk cluster of banks another major indicator uh, as the literature has also suggested that is the level of deposits in a bank that how much deposits a bank has that shows the major confidence which the investors have that if the investors do not have confidence they would not like to keep uh, uh, their funds in that bank so that is uh, another indicator which has come out as a very important significant uh, differentiator between the high and the low risk clusters uh, contrary to what uh, literature has suggested for the other emerging economies the difference in risk profile does not uh, necessarily come because of non performing assets now uh, this this is a very important uh, discovery for indian public sector banks because we have always had a pressure from the government for controlling the high uh, the non performing assets but it uh, also means that this is not a differentiator more or less banks in this public sector in the government owned banks they have a similar range of the non performing assets so they do not differentiate the risk of the bank so it is yet to be seen whether that uh that's a part of our forthcoming study that what is the uh, contribution of non performing assets if we com uh, compare the ownership structure for example if we compare the public and private sector banks risk profile then what is 
does this contribution of non performing asset change or is it this sim- is it is not important for determining the risk uh, profile within the ownership group of a bank the so major basic findings what we have uh, found out is that we have already told you we have uh, fill, tried to fill the gap in the methodology section of the banking risk by introducing a new uh, methodology which can compare um, the risk in a group instead of individualistic components and we have tried to balance out all the five categories of risk then uh, the findings basically suggest that the bigger banks are the better performers because of the higher asset size and the more profitability and uh, as far as the differentiators are concerned they are uh, restricted to the profitability index uh, profitability indicators like uh, roe return on equity return on assets and net non performing assets and the loans to deposit ratio which is again a very important uh, phenomena variable in the literature as to when it comes to banking risk does not differentiate the risk profile of the indian public sector banks so these are the major findings uh, what we have gathered from the study uh, that's it from my side i'm open for questions thank you and uh, good uh, presentation uh, uh, with respect to uh, question that you are working on npa with respect to your uh, uh, find, you know uh, the other banks and all right. so what are the other factors uh, which are usually uh, imp- you know what are the factors or key parameters you have considered in the research so what we have generally we have taken these uh, 10 variables to determine the okay. cluster of the banks uh, on the basis of their risk so these uh variables are indicators of the five major types of risk that is the operating credit uh, interest rate market uh, and liquidity risk so these are the five risk which the international standards define so these we have taken that uh, 10 variables to see that which of these variables actually contribute the difference within the same ownership category so what we have found out that Uh, although npas are high in the public sector bank but the range is similar in all these banks so they do not differentiate between uh, high and the low risk banks and when it when they are standardized the variables are standardized so they don't differentiate similarly loans to deposit that means how much loans are you giving and how much deposits are you taking that difference is generally considered an indicator of risk so that it, it doesn't uh, again differentiate between the high and the low risk banks in the same ownership category so these two are the major standouts from the earlier literature finding what we are uh, we are doing in the further uh, papers is comparing the different ownership groups and seeing that the, do the results change or would they remain the same and another thing which we are doing is the ch- checking the impact of covid uh, that with how the risk profile of these banks change which will give us a suitable uh fundamental so that the policy makers can check that if these banks can survive covid and still remain in the low risk cluster so they are financially fundamentally strong okay thank you shalija and uh, a good presentation uh, and my one suggestion is like yeah. uh, uh, usually in any platforms or international platform revealing the names of the organizations right uh, like this company is not doing good or something or this organization is not having high risk right so that would be uh, you know uh, if anyone or any organization sees that would be little bit riskier <laughs> and it is not recommended usually many researchers will hide that company's name for that purpose usually uh, not they don't disclose unless and until we insist to just show it to us uh, and tell us right. what is it so i would have suggested not to use uh, or recommend any suggestions like that with respect to your uh, findings uh, and uh, the names and uh, you know the, especially the banks names when it is in a pu- public and international platforms thank you yeah that is a great suggestion i'll keep in mind while presenting the future research in this topic thank you thank you thank sounds you. great